All right, here come a couple of solutions for using random to decide random actions. Uh, the first one there. We want to hit the M key on the player. So player, add event, key press, letter M. And we want to decide a random direction to move. This shouldn't be too bad. There's four directions to choose from. And so that means we should be finding a number if there's equal odds. Let's just do uh, some num equals i random range. We can pick a number from 1 to 4. Now we just have to have a series of if statements to decide what to do. So we can ask if some number is 1. Speed equals 4. Direction is 0. Now I'm just going to go down the chain here, taking care of all the options. If some num is 2, speed equals 4, direction is 90. If some num is 3, speed equals 4, direction is, well, let's do it in order, 180. If some num is 4, speed is 4. Direction is 270. That's really it. Now, I'm really confident this is going to work. And it's a good time just to show you one little thing about efficiency here. Whenever you see code repeating that looks exactly the same, you'll see here speed 4, speed 4, speed 4, speed 4. This is something that's done in all four of these if statements, no matter what we're setting the speed to 4. So I'm going to show you a little trick here. You could leave it like this, but as you get better at programming, you'll start to realize you could take it out of there. And since it's common to everything, just add it down below. I'm having issues getting below here. There we go. Speed is 4. So. The if statements just set the direction. And then the speed, always 4. So just put it on a line all by itself. Okay, It's a little more efficient. Makes the code a little cleaner, easier to read too. Now if we actually test that out really quick, like we always should, I'll hit the M key. And you'll see every time I hit, it's just picking a different direction. Nice. Second part of your challenge. When the player goes over the chest, so player collides with the chest, we want to get rid of the chest and randomly decide whether to leave behind a coin or leave behind some gold with a little uh, more chance of coin. So here we go. We've collided with the chest. This one won't quite be as big. We've collided with the chest, so let's destroy it with the other instance destroy. Hopefully you're getting fast and uh, you those cut pop in your head right away. And then we want to make coin or make gold. Since this one's going to have a little bit of odds to it too, more of a chance, just don't pick a number from 1 to 2. Pick a larger range here. So let's go for number is I random range 1 to 100. And let's make it maybe like 25%. So if num is less than or equal to 25, we'll make a coin. Now, you're going to notice this is the first time we're doing this. Object coin. If the number is greater than 25, instance create x y object gold now when I said this is the first time we're doing something it's this when I made the coin I didn't do this I didn't say like Carl the coin the reason is is you can actually just use instance create on its own what I can't do to the coin here is get it moving 
because I don't know its name. I don't have its uh, its reference. So I can't give coin a speed. I can't give that coin a direction, an image angle, or anything else. But it's actually okay if the coin's just going to sit there and do nothing. You can actually just use this line, and it's totally fine. Or if it really bothers you, you can put the names like we've been doing. Okay, but it doesn't make a difference. It would have worked either way. So 25 or less coin. Whoa, this is backwards. Hopefully uh, you're saying in your head, yeah, that's not quite right. This should be the other way around. If it's 25 or less, this should be the gold, right? That's the lower chance. Bigger than 25, way more of a chance of it being bigger than 25. And that's going to be the coin. Oh, perfect. Those are the kind of mistakes. Very easy to make in programming, like I just did there. But a good lesson nonetheless. You know, when you do have problems with your code, go back and check for those little things. All right, let's give it a quick test. And, you know, you have to run a couple more tests to make sure it's working, but it's going to work. Coin, 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 a little bit of gold. Perfect. Good odds there. Now, the last part of the challenge was when the skull is hit, give it a one-fifth chance of being destroyed. Okay, this one should be easy after doing all these other ones. Right now we have, uh, let's see what the arrow's hitting. Nothing. Skull. There we go. A little bit of code already there. Skull. Hit by arrow. Destroying the arrow. And let's see if we have to destroy the skull. One-fifth chance is just a one out of five. So let's pick some number. I random range. One to five. And this time we just have to know one choice. Choose any of the numbers if it's a one. If it's a 2, if it's a 3, if it's a 4, if it's a 5, there's a one-fifth chance of any of those numbers. Usually just take the 1. If it's a 1, I need to destroy myself. So instance, destroy. Remember, right now I am coding inside the skull. And so instance destroy will destroy the skull. Give it a little chance here. And I'll pop that code back afterwards for you to peek at. And you'll see once in a while it gets destroyed. Well, that's a tough one. Sometimes random can be very random, right? And there you go. So it looks like it's working okay. And so that was, again, okay, that was just a short little segment for that one. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you were successful with those and they're going well. Uh, next lesson, we're going we're gonna to really do some good mods on some of the old programs you were working on and give you time to practice all this variable and random stuff. Thanks for watching.